Uh, so today we've got Jessica Polka, who's the executive director uh, of ASAP Bio, and also Thomas Lemberger, who's the project lead on Review Commons, and he's actually at EMBO, um, who are both going to give us uh, some more information about Review Commons. Jessica will outline what 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 started Review Commons in the first place, and Thomas has a lot of information about the process behind it. Uh, it's very excited to hear them tell us that, and then we'll move into a question and answer session. Does anyone have any questions to, before we start off? You've all got an option to unmute yourselves. So there's a, a microphone symbol with a line through it for yourselves at the moment. You can also show your video um, if you like. We welcome you to do that. Um, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or send them directly to me and I'll try to help you as we go through this uh, community call. But for this point, I will hand over to Jessica to take us through. Thank you. Thanks so much, Naomi. Um, and I also wanted to just introduce Victoria Yan. Uh, so Victoria is uh, a coordinator of Reimagine Review, which is our ASAP Bio project where we're trying to catalog innovative review experiments, and she's visiting Boston mm -hmm. for the week. Um, but uh, I'm very excited to tell you a little bit about um, why we are really um, thrilled to partner with EMBO about uh, through Review Commons. So first, I think that given that you're on this call, probably many of you are already aware that ASAP Bio is a small nonprofit that is working to promote transparency and innovation in life sciences publishing. And the real kind of catalyst for ASAP Bio beginning as first a meeting and later an organization was a piece of research that Ron Vale, our president, um, had conducted in 2015 where he found by comparing the number of panels in papers published in Cell, Nature, and JCB that the number of figure panels has been dramatically increasing over the course of 30 years. More and more information is being put into papers um, and correlated with this increase, graduate students are taking longer, uh, over a year longer, to actually come out with their first first author publication. So the overall time to prepare a, uh, a research output is increasing. So we saw this as a, um, a call to action to try to promote more speed in, in science communication. But the real underlying reason why this is happening um, probably has to do with the fact that the current journal publishing system encompasses many different functions in one journal publishing process, that is, Prior to the advent of preprint servers, um, journals were the primary way of, or pretty much the only way of disseminating research in a formal way, of conducting peer review, and also of evaluating the study and how it fits into the context of uh, the field overall. Um, of course, now we have the ability to disseminate using bioarchive, other preprint servers, and this allows us to rapidly share results before journal submission or um, you know, at other points. However, uh, the issue remains that because peer review is tied very closely to evaluation, uh, there is some uh, pressure for researchers to put together a, um, a manuscript that's going to get them into the highest profile journal possible. And I think that this is one of the drivers to the phenomenon that uh, exists, which is that approximately half of journal articles don't get published in their first journal. Rather, um, there's a sort of long tail where some of these papers are actually being submitted to many, many different journals. And this process is not only um, time consuming for authors, but for editors and reviewers as well. And it's been estimated that there's been 15 million hours wasted each year on performing duplicate peer review. That is, peer review for a journal that ultimately decides to reject a manuscript. Um, and given the fact that um, there's a lot of concerns about making the best use of reviewer time and um, really treating this resource um, as something that is uh, you know, somewhat precious, this is, I think, a major concern. And furthermore, the fact that peer review is tied very closely to evaluation of the manuscript also feeds into a situation in which reviews are not necessarily as constructive as they could be in our current system. First, reviewers, in addition to providing feedback to authors, 
also perform a function of gatekeeping for the journal, of um, you know, basically recommending uh, editorial decisions of rejection for papers that are perhaps not interesting or not enough. This can contribute to some reviewers focusing more on the journal fit um, than in some cases the science. Um, and it also promotes a situation where additional experiments are recommended in order to transform the paper into something perhaps more flashy um, that might fit the uh, desired impact of the journal, as depicted in this cartoon from Red Pen, Black Pen. So to try to address um, these sort of two major problems, one, the inefficiencies in, in publishing, and two, um, the constructiveness of reviewer behavior, um, ASAP Bio is excited to partner with EMBO to launch Review Commons, which is a portable peer review platform uh, that performs peer review before submission to a journal. And we're doing this as a limited time trial with support from the Helmsley Trust. So I'm very excited to work um, with my colleagues at ASAP Bio, of course, Naomi and Ron on this project. And also just want to acknowledge Bernd and Maria, uh, who um, have been really driving this project. Uh, but you'll hear now from the project lead at EMBO, uh, Tomas Lamberger, who will describe more about the, uh, the actual mechanics and functioning of the project. Are there any questions before we hand over the screen? Okay. But then I, I think, um, Thomas, please take it away. Okay, so now let me do the dangerous bit of the presentation. Do you see the slides? That's perfect. Okay, wow, amazing. First time. So, so well, thank you very much for, for having me in, in this call. Um, um, and thanks, uh, and Jessica, for the very, uh, very eloquent uh, uh, introduction. So, I'm going to present review comments. We we launched. Uh, I forgot. Uh, we launched last week on on Monday. So the the platform is is live, and I'm going to to walk you through um, with through sort of the principles of how this platform is working and and some of the uh, some of the details i don't think we will have the time to go through all the details um but of course we you can ask any any uh, questions um at the end so review comments is a platform to to do a independent review uh, independent of journals and this before a submission to to journals and the, this idea is fairly simple, is not completely novel. Uh, quite a few past or, or current platforms are doing uh, similar things with the idea of uh, separating the, the peer review process from uh, the, uh, the publication in journals. Now, in all these systems, and including in review comments, um, there are many different possibilities on how to implement it, how to run the peer review, how to interface or not with journals, um, what kind of decisions can be made, uh, who is actually running the entire platform. And I think we had great fun with, uh, with Azabayo and, and Embo to, to brainstorm a lot uh, and, and going through many different permutations and fine tuning and debates and, and, uh, and sometimes uh, strong arguments to, to finally now uh, reach a, a system that, that we have launched. Uh, I think it is important to realize that the conditions under which we launch, they are the initial conditions of, the, of this experiment we are doing, but of course as we go, we are going to evaluate the, the results, uh, the behaviors, and, and possibly adapt the workflows or, or, or the policies. So, so things are not written in stone. Of course, we would like to keep the conditions for a sufficient amount of time that uh, we can analyze the, the, the data and the behaviors in a, in a meaningful way. So review comments um, will provide two things to authors. We really try to put the authors at the, at the center of the process and review comments will provide two things. The first one is what we call a refereed preprint, which is uh, a preprint associated 
with a, a full set of, of reviews, and that preprint, that refereed preprint, can be made uh, public immediately uh, on, on BioArchive. The second product, if you, want, if you wish, from the, the side of the authors, is to have a process and a technology that facilitates the submission of the already reviewed manuscripts uh, to a, a consortium of um, uh, affiliated journals, and we have now 17 journals that are affiliated with review comments uh, that uh, are going to collaborate with us. So the goal, uh, and, and this was already um, uh, delineated by, by Jessica, is really to focus the peer review on the science rather than on journal fit, and, and these two aspects of the, the scientific evaluation have been conflated now uh, in, in practice, and one of the major goals of, of of this uh, platform is to disentangle this, uh, these two aspects. Now, the second is to improve the efficiency and the transparency of peer review, um, and, and finally to accelerate the dissemination of peer-reviewed research uh, through uh, preprints and through refereed preprints. So um, here I'm going to show you the global workflow. Again, we don't have time to go in, in all the arcane details, but essentially there will be a, a, a two routes of submission for authors. They can submit directly a preprint that is already posted on BioArchive, and at the moment we support only BioArchive, um, but they can also submit a manuscript directly. And now from the, the submissions that we have uh, uh, since uh, last Monday, I can say it's kind of sort of 50-50% of direct submissions and, and transfers from, from preprints. Uh, once the paper has been submitted and is passing a set of essential quality checks that is conducted by the review comments teams, uh, there is an initial ed editorial uh, selection in collaboration with uh, an advisory board, and we will um, uh, come back to, to, this, uh, to this issue. Uh, if the paper is um, deemed to be sent out for in-depth review, um, the paper is transferred to one of the EMBO press editors who is acting then as a reviewing editor. Uh, the peer review is then run essentially as we run the peer review for all uh, our journals, with uh, trying to leverage our network of trusted uh, referees. Um, when the, the, the full set of reviews arrives back, uh, the, the editor of review comments, we call that the managing editor of review comments, is an independent editor, um, will then transmit the reviews back to, to the authors. The authors will have a, a given window of time to draft an initial response to the reviews, and will have the opportunity then to post these reviews plus their response uh, onto BioArchive using, you, may, and, uh, you, you probably heard about this technology, TRIP, the transparent review in preprint that has been implemented now by uh, BioArchive and that allows to post um, referees, uh, referee, uh, referee reports alongside the, 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 bio, the, the preprint. And I will show you an example of that. Uh, the second step then for the authors is if they wish, they are not obliged, of course, but if they wish, they can then select one of the journals of the consortium of affiliated journals to transfer their manuscript, but also the reviews and also their response. Uh, and if the first journal is not interested in the light of the reviews or maybe in the light of the scope of the paper, um, the, the authors can then um, perform a second transfer and up to three rounds of such transfers to um, affiliated journals. The, all the journals that are affiliated with review comments agreed, and this is the key thing that, that we, we are very proud that we managed to, to do that, all the affiliated journals agreed to consider those reviews and in principle not to start the, the peer review from scratch, not to select a, a, a new set of, of rev reviewers and, and start the process from, from the beginning. So we, we hope that this is going to be a game changer. Of course, we are going to have to, me to measure how, how well this is respected. But in any case, if the paper is uh, accepted after revision, uh, the paper will be published in that journal, and uh, we can also say that all the affiliated journals that we have, and I will show you the list, <clears throat> are implementing 
some form of transparent uh, review or will shortly implement uh, a transparent review. So the paper will actually be published uh, um, uh, together with the reviews uh, on the side of the journal. So <clears throat> we think that this <clears throat> overall workflow will encourage reviewers to look at the papers as they stand, as they are, and not as they, as they could be for a given journal fit. And, and this is, of course, maybe the major philosophical drive of the, of the entire project to improve peer review and to really focus the peer review on the science. Uh, as a result also of the posting of, of referee preprint on BioArchive, we will allow much faster dissemination of peer-reviewed research. Um, and we cut down the, the serial re-reviewing uh, cycles at Journal with this agreement that, um, with, uh, this agreement that um, the reviewers are not going to start uh, the review uh, from scratch. And finally, of course, with this double transparency on BioArchive and on the journals, um, we, we will massively uh, improve transparency and make it very visible and, and uh, hopefully uh, um, uh, widen the adoption of, of transparent re uh, review in, in, the, in the life sciences. So this is the global workflow, and, and I would have very colorful slides again to to show you every step and who is doing what. Now, we don't have the time to go through that. Uh, let me just go through the key features of how we, we implemented the system. Uh, the, the review comments is going to be um, managed by a managing editor who is um, uh, making the initial uh, editorial selection and who is going to, to liaise with the, the advisory board. Um, the managing editor um, is working hand in hand with an academic board. I will show you an example. And then assigns an Embo Press editor uh, who will be in charge exclusively of running the peer review process. So there is a separation of the roles of the managing editor who interacts with the authors, uh, who makes the initial decision and, and, and gives the, the reviews back to the authors, and the Embo Press editors who exclusively are in charge of the peer review process using their, their own network of uh, reviewers. Once the authors receive the, a full set of reviews, um, the authors will be given four weeks, but they can extend this time window if they need to formulate an initial response to the reviewers. And this is important because if they choose to, to post the reviews on BioArchive, it was very important to us that they had the chance to also provide uh, their response and their point of view uh, in view of potentially uh, uh, critical comments from the reviews. The initially, uh, during the, the first phase of the project, uh, posting of the reviews on BioArchive is going to be optional. Um, but, of course, the, the aim is to make that global as, in, as, a, as a de facto uh, workflow. Now, this is going to be one parameter that we are going to, to measure, is the degree of interest of the community to do this and what can we do to, um, uh, to, to promote that. Uh, now, one important thing to realize that review comments, in, in sharp contrast to, to journals, does not make any decision after peer review. So review comments will not uh, provide any recommendation in terms of to which journal the authors should go and will not do any acceptance or rejection after peer review. With some exceptions, uh, which uh, um, are related to breaches of uh, ethical standards or, or, or data integrity issues, their review comments reserve the right to reject a paper and to remove it uh, completely from the system. Um, now, the author, in, in the first implementation of, of review comments, um, the authors will be able to transfer their reviewed uh, manuscript only to one journal at a time. So they will have to do this sequentially, submit to one journal, the journal examines the paper, maybe rejects it, and then the authors go to the second one. Uh, we could imagine a more open system where there would be a marketplace where the authors could sort of tender their, their, their paper to 10 journals at the, at the same time. Uh, we can maybe discuss that in the discussion. We, we think at the current um, stage it would not be a very scalable uh, solution, but maybe there are ways to, to make it work. 
Now, affiliate journals, uh, as I said, have all agreed not to start the peer review afresh, and it is also important that they remain completely editorially independent. There is no obligation for them to publish uh, a paper, so there is no guarantee that papers that enter the system will eventually be published, you know, irrespective of uh, the comments of the, the reviewers. So I encourage you to, to look in, into more details into our author guideline to authors and, and, and reviewers, where we describe then more in detail uh, the, the policies and, and also the review process. So the team uh, of, free, of review comments, as I said, uh, is composed of uh, uh, one managing editor who is going to really manage the process, Sarah Monaco, um, helped with an editorial assistant. And then we have a, a large team of, of uh, 16 or 15 Embo Press reviewing editor who are going really to use the expertise. They are all professional, seasoned professional editors who are going to, to run the, the peer review process and the paper are going to be assigned purely based on topic and expertise of, this, um, of these uh, reviewing editors. We have a, a very nice advisory board of 80 members uh, at, uh, currently, and we, we selected, <clears throat> again, all uh, the scientists based on uh, being early career group leaders. So they are in, in average, I didn't calculate the average age, but um, they are in average very, very young and very engaged. And we have beautiful already engagement from them. They are extremely helpful. And I think they are, they are very enthusiastic about the concept and being involved in, in the system. <clears throat> so their role is to, to help um, for the initial editorial assessment. We will not be able to review all the papers indiscriminately of, of quality or, or scope and form. We will review only research papers. Um, and we will check, of course, that these papers are written in a following good scholarly practice. Um, the papers have to be ready and, and in good format such that reviewer, uh, reviewers and, and experts uh, will be able to evaluate the science and, and uh, that these papers are really worth spending uh, five to six hours of evaluation by, by each reviewers. So we are going to be quite strict to, to to see, to, to really check that there are data, there are figures, there are uh, proper reference lists and, and so on. We will not review anything that is a preliminary uh, manuscript. Now, there is a scope to, a scientific scope to review comments. It is a little bit slightly more restricted than the, the, the union of the scope of all the affiliate journals. And, and this is, uh, there is a good reason for that, is that we have to run the peer review in fields where we feel comfortable and where we feel we can obtain high quality uh, reviews. Now, there will be an initial editorial selection uh, for, for, the, the, uh, for the scientific advance. And essentially what we're looking for is to be able to maintain a, a very good and high quality peer review as we run it at, at EMBO. And for that, we, we have to be careful that we don't send uh, absolutely everything. So we want to send papers where there is a good chance uh, that we can attract experts in the field of the paper that are interested in reviewing the paper and reviewing in depth, which means invariably spending between four and, and eight hours. So, so that is really our goal, to maintain the quality of the peer review, and, and therefore we are going to look for, for papers that makes an advance in the respective field, in a specific field, um, and this can include various formats, uh, including, of course, new findings and new research, but also methodological developments and, and resources. We are also interested in, in sort of uh, alternate uh, uh, pieces, like confirmatory or refuting results or, or, or replication, but again, with the, with the expectation that this should uh, provide value to the field and we're not going to review uh, purely derivative science where one gene name has been replaced by the others and the same set of, of experiments are going to be done or whether a tiny parameter has been changed and that's the same things ha have been done again. So we are going to look at, at that now. Admittedly, this is a, a, a tricky business to, to set a, a bar that is, that is reasonable and that is sort of uh, homogeneous. So <clears throat> we, we consult, we are going to consult with the board for most of the paper, probably all the papers at least at the beginning. 
and we have these three questions uh, to the board, and I'll, I'll show you already one of the response we, we, we got. In your opinion, is this study of value to, to your research of uh, uh, your field of research? And you see one, one uh, a very nice response. You know, this manuscript uh, addresses this and that. It's kind of almost like a me review, and but it's documenting what these scientists in that field, and I, I blacked out the 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 terms to sort of anonymize it a, a little bit to just generalize it so so the board is sort of expressing what is the value to to the field if there is any value and we had also negative results a uh, negative response where the board was very clear to say well this is very derivative and uh, it, it it sort of sets a, a wrong hypothesis and then shows that the hypothesis is wrong this is not useful for anybody. Uh, the second question is whether the the, the 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 results are significant, or what is the nature of the advance? Is it clinical? Is it conceptual? Is it uh, is it in terms of coverage? <clears throat> is it a, a, a completely new discovery, or is it incremental as compared to the existing knowledge? And I think this is a critical question to sort of educate also the board and the reviewers that it is possible to comment on the significance of, of an advance completely independently of any scope and editorial bar of, a, of any journal. And it is really essentially comparing uh, the, the, the results and, and the findings and the conclusions to the existing knowledge in the field, uh, which is very important to, to do. And finally, the, maybe the, the most objective question is really, uh, do you think that colleagues with, within your field are likely to be interested in reviewing the manuscript? Because this is the limit, limiting step. We deal with a finite, uh, a finite uh, pool of, of reviewers, and, and we, this is going to, to, to constrain the, the, the global system of, of review comments. The, the reviewers are, <clears throat> are going to be invited from the pool of trusted reviewers that we use every day at, at the journals, and we have a very large database of of 10,000 or 20,000 reviewers, but we want also to recruit new reviewers, especially early career scientists, and so we are going to actively encourage co-referring, and we call, call that named co-referring. Co we don't want to have co-referring that is kept anonymous, but we will have a field. We have a field in the in the in the uh, report that asks for the name of who reviewed the paper such that we can then contact them uh, directly next time around if they did a good job. Uh, reviewers are asked to agree to the transparent process since all the journals are implementing the transparent process and uh, the reports are anonymous by default but their uh, reviewers are of course welcome to sign directly in the content of the report if they if they want to do so. Uh, we checked systematically for some kind of conf conflict of interest, for example, a long-standing co-publishing uh, record, which indicates a, a network of collaboration, uh, shared institutions, and, and so on. Um, and finally, we provide the o o opportunity to authors to exclude reviewers, up to four or five, I, I don't remember, I think five, up to five or, uh, reviewers, of course not 15, and not the entire field, but uh, we do this uh, regularly at the journals and we always honor the, the demands of uh, exclusions. Uh, maybe I'll show you here, <clears throat> without going too much into the detail, the referee reports, the, the suggested structure that we we are, are going to ask uh, the, the reviewers to to follow as much as, as they are free. It's very difficult, of course, to force reviewers to to follow a structure, and so we, we stay very close to what they do anyway. But we, with providing some important pointers to, and maybe a, a little bit of a tool set on how to do journal independent review. So there is a first section that is really concentrating on the evidence and the conclusions, do I, um, is the evidence supporting the conclusions? Uh, are these conclusions uh, uh, close to the truth, given the uh, available data? And if not, uh, which conclusions should be toned down or which additional experiments should be done? And I think I, I put now in, in red uh, this notion that the paper should be evaluated for what it is and not what it could be in the opinion of the reviewers or, you know, even worse, uh, 
uh, uh, within mind a given uh, a given uh, editorial level of a journal. So this is really the core of the journal independent review and why we want to do journal independent review. Now, the second part is going to be about the significance, which is a little bit closer to an editorial assessment. But again, here our goal is to try to, to provide the tools to the reviewers to comment on the significance of an approach, which is important. You know, is it a big discovery or not? But irrespective of, of a journal, this is not related to the scope of a journal. It's not related to a selectivity of journal, but really in, in, in scientific um, terms, what is the nature of the advance and how does it compare to the existing knowledge? Um, and this can be articulated in a very, in a very scientific and, and, and in a very sort of general way, a very portable way. Uh, and finally, we also ask the reviewers to describe their own field of expertise. Uh, this is particularly important in multidisciplinary uh, 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 papers where different fields of expertise uh, have to be represented and it's important that the authors can see from which angle the, the reviewers is coming. So you see on the right the, the referee uh, report, the form where we repeat this point to really try to encourage the, the, the reviewers to have that in mind when submitting the, the review. Now, the experience tells that this sort of guiding of the reviewer um, needs quite a bit of effort. It, we, we did that at Embo Press with some success, uh, but of course, we, we cannot micromanage the, the reviewers. So once the, the, paper, the paper has been reviewed and, and potentially the uh, authors have posted the reviews on BioArchive, they have the choice of transferring to one of the affiliate uh, journals. And uh, as I mentioned, we have 17 journals uh, who are, are playing the game with us. Uh, eLife, uh, um, all the Embo Press family of journals, the Company of Biologists uh, uh, family, the PLOS family, a journal of cell biology from local university press and molecular biology of the cell. So these are all academic or a community uh, journals, they all implement the transparent process and it sort of gives already a flavor to how review comments could expand with adding more um, like-minded uh, journals to, to this pool. And, and of course, we work uh, in close uh, collaboration with BioArchive who implemented uh, the system that allows us now to, to post uh, the reviews on BioArchive using a technology that it depends on the platform hypothesis that uh, allows really to, to display reviews uh, alongside the preprint. So the integration between the different platform bioarchive hypothesis, but of course also the editorial systems from the different journal, this is not an easy task and it has, it was, and it still is a major challenge for review comments to make it work um, and, and to, to get really a portable review uh, working in practice uh, such that the authors have a, a, a good experience. Um, I show you just uh, here two screenshots of the live system, uh, how it looks like from the side, the perspective of, a, of an author. Here I'm an author, Thomas Lemberger, okay. I have one live manuscript and I, I can now choose to, it has been reviewed, so I, I have received the reviews and I can choose now to to transfer to one of the journals. And you see that on, on that screen, I have I had already two rounds. I tried, of course, the best journal, which is Molecular Systems Biology. Um, just disclaimer, I was the chief editor of Molecular Systems Biology, so that's why I'm always showing it. The, it, the paper has been rejected. Then I tried PLOS Biology, the paper has been rejected. And you see that the times uh, are indicated. And now I have a third chance where I can try uh, to to transfer to, to one of the remaining ones. Uh, we would like to limit to three rounds of, of transfers to limit potential abuse of the system where people would just go from, from the top to the down, whatever the top is in their mind and the, and, and the bottom, but we would like to avoid that, the, the, that some authors would just systematically go through the same journals one after the other, leading to a, a global frustration and, 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 and fatigue. We will have to monitor this, uh, this behavior as well um, and, and maybe make some, some adjust, adjustments to, to see uh, what we can provide that is, uh, that is reasonable and, and feasible. And finally, here is a, one of these famous uh, refereed preprint on BioArchive. So this is a preprint and you see on the right the, this little tab, peer reviews, 
uh, this tab appears only in in, uh, in preprints that are associated with uh, reviews, not only rev uh, from review comments, but also from eLife or from Peerage of Science and, and, other, and other platforms. So they have a general platform that relies on hypotheses that detects if there is a review associated with this preprint and then shows this little tab. If you click on the tab, uh, then the, the, the section expands. And the way we are going at review comments implemented is that each review is a separate post that can be comment on, uh, commented on or that can be linked and shared. And finally, uh, you see at the bottom that there is also the reply to the reviewers where the authors present their point of view and their arguments. And I think this is, again, uh, I would like to stress out, I think this is very important. I think good peer review is critical uh, review. It is a scientific process where we have to challenge conclusions, we have to challenge the evidence, uh, and this is how science gets really, really robust. But then it is also important for the, the authors to be able to respond to this, uh, these challenges and, and, if you wish, defend themselves and represent their point of view. So this is what I wanted to, to show about review comments, maybe to end just with a note of philosophy, because, of course, we are preprints are really central to, to this project. I think in the old days, the, the idea of the division between preprints and journal was very, very easy. Journals have all these features, uh, they have peer review, they have typesetting, publishing in XML, they have news and views, and so on and so on. While preprint was really this low friction, uh, very, very low tech and, and very easy, uh, very easy in a platform where essentially the paper is published as a PDF only, uh, as submitted by the authors, assigned a DOI, and that's, I'm simplifying a little bit, but that's about it. Now, the journals are thinking a lot now about all these services they're providing, and this is my little telecom uh, charts, you know, where uh, all these services could be, you know, the XL uh, 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 subscription, but maybe some subset of these services would uh, would be good uh, for, for some communities, and of course then cost less, and if we think now now, about open access uh, business models, we could imagine different prices and different APCs for different sets of services. And now I think with all the initiatives, not only review comments, but all the initiatives that add um, uh, layers on, on preprint and that adds uh, value to, to the preprints, I think the picture is getting a little bit more complicated. And I think it's a very interesting phase now to see how how from preprint we can sort of reinvent the, the literature and, and redefine maybe a very important aspects of, of scientific publishing, including peer review, which is now uh, uh, integrated uh, with uh, the, this concept of referent uh, preprint. Uh, typesetting and publishing uh, as HTML, XML is already done by, by BioArchive, and we can imagine that additional services like um, uh, providing news and views may be extracted from the comments of the, of the reviewers, um, and maybe uh, services like data curation and deposition will be added to, to, to reviews to construct a layer by layer uh, a, a new, a, a new um, a landscape, a, a new ecosystem. Okay, so this is uh, what I wanted to, to say, and, and uh, I'm, of course, happy to take any questions. Thanks so much, Thomas, for that. Um, we've had some excellent questions on the agenda document, so uh, we've got some people ready to ask their questions. Pablo, I wonder if I can invite you to unmute and go first. Hello, can you hear me? Perfectly, yep. thank you. All right, okay, thanks. Yeah, excellent review of the review comments. I have one question that is, if an author submit a paper to one of these journals, but without the review associated. Can this journal check anyway the review commons data for that review? No, no. So uh, it's a very, very good question. So as much as possible, we are going to um, make the decisions of the affiliate journals um, confidential. So other journals will not know which decision other journals have have done because we don't want to prejudice the, the authors. If they have been rejected for Membo Journal and they go to PLOS Biology, PLOS Biology should not be influenced by the fact that they have been rejected by Embo Journal. Now, another and sort of corollary of, of that is that if authors see these reviews and 
maybe these are really bad reviews. You know, maybe review comments had bad luck and selected wrong reviews, or they misunderstood the paper, or, or for any reason, the authors think that these reviews are not good. They are not going to be stigmatized for, for the rest of their life across the 70 journals with these, with these reviews, you know, on the front end. If they want, they can approach any affiliate journal, any journal, also uh, outside, and submit directly the paper using the classical workflow. And in that case, we would not like that the journal can look in the archive of review comments, ah, oh, let me see what has been done before, and so on. So we have really, we have decided to put the authors in the center, and they have to have this feeling that they keep, a, they keep in control. And it, it was probably one of the most frequently asked questions uh, on Twitter and, and also in conversations is, oh my God, but now, you know, I'm going to be stuck with bad reviews. If I, if I have a, you know, review of three, the famous review of three, and, and now I got it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed, you know, I can go to any of these 70 journals, they're all going to say no. So we had to find, and it would require going a little bit more in the details now of the workflow, we had to find ways to protect the authors in a reasonable way against this, this possible sort of, you know, self-exclusion. Now, this has some limits, and one of the limits uh, that is very clear is if a journal finds issues with data integrity or, or, or ethics, then this journal has to inform review comments, of course. They will likely reject the paper. And review comments then will look at that very seriously and reserve the right to reject the paper and expel it from the system. And even we, we, we say that in the instruction to authors, if it's a serious case, we reserve the right to post a note on Biorarchiv next to the reviews to say that this is not an endorsement by review comments and there are issues pending in, in this paper. Um, if there is any serious breach of, of ethics and, and data integrity, uh, we cannot give the impression that review comments uh, endorse a, a paper like this. Now, there's another case um, that is a little bit more difficult and we will have to see on a case by case how, how we, we handle them. If a paper has been transferred to a journal, uh, the authors have revised the paper according to the, to the journal's instruction, the journal sends the, the revision back to the original reviewers and these reviewers would not be satisfied by the, the revision, let's say that uh, a, a statistical test is still flawed, underpowered, uh, that controls have not been done, that the conclusions can still not be derived from the presented results, uh, these reviewers are going to, to write that and, and write in a report, and the journal may reject that paper after revision, after re review. And then the question is, of course, what should we do? Should we keep that within that journal and hide it from any affiliate journal that will subsequently see that journal at the risk that the, the, the reviewers are going to comment on the same issue again and again? Um, or should we find a compromise that if the, if the issue is serious and linked to the conclusions and the referees have written a short report to explain their point of view, we integrate that into the review process such that it is visible to the next affiliate. And, and this is the solution that we have adopted. We will have to see how well it works, but we will not reveal the identity of the journal that has rejected. So this, this is not going to be shared across affiliates. Thomas, thank you for that answer. And thank you for the question, Pablo. Um, just to remind everybody, this call is being recorded, but if there is anything that you want to ask or say, um, just say if you want to trim down the recording as you say it. I'm going to go through and trim that out. Um, to ask a question, you can go into the document and we will, any questions not answered during this call, uh, we'll go into the document and invite oh, okay. Thomas or Jessica to uh, add an answer on, okay. uh, on the document. But next, I'd like to go to Mahesh. Mahesh, are you ready to ask your question? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Good. Okay, so uh, this is a really nice initiative and it looks like you've built it to be very flexible and I'd like to probe a little bit how flexible it is. So um, would this also work as the final endpoint of a preprint? Uh, in other words, can an author submit a paper into the review comments without selecting a target journal at all? 
course. Yes, absolutely. There, there's, there's no obligation for the, the authors to submit to a journal. They, they can totally stop there. We can even, you know, this is going to be part of the analysis, I think, to see if any scientists actually stop there. Because it is true for some papers, you have been reviewed, you have provided your reply, maybe posted even a revision on, on BioArchive. This is, will not hide the, the reviews. And, and essentially, you are done. It's fine. So, so this we, ha we will have to see. Uh, there is nothing in the workflow that that forces. It's just a, it's a choice. You can also actually um, exit the system completely and submit to another journal, taking your reviews with you. And and uh, if you go to Nature and Nature approaches us to know the names of the reviews we will communicate the name of the reviews after having asked the reviewers if they if they um, if they agree but so we we will at least at the beginning start to be very open open to the outside with in mind that we want to to put the authors in control and if they want to take their beautiful uh, reviews to to nature we are not going to uh, prevent that and we are going to help them such that nature can can use the reviews most likely in practice it's not going to happen but at least review comments is open to that to that possibility thank you thanks, thanks mahesh uh daniela have you got a question okay here you sorry i was on the document uh thank you i, I think i want to ask um the question that is next because it's similar to what mahesh uh wrote so uh, we're wondering, I know that this is, you know, still an experiment, um, if you would be, uh, if you if you ever considered uh, adding, like, also community reviews uh, to this, like, package of reviews that is uh, then sent. So, basically, like, uh, you know, obviously, I'm asking because I'm, uh, uh, I work for uh, a pre-review, but also peer community in, and other uh, reviews that can come from uh, reviewers that are not directly selected by Review Commons. Uh, so, I wonder if that can you can ever consider like adding that and to help kind of speed up also the process even further uh why not i think at the beginning probably not because we will have to you know not change too many variables at the same time i think it's already a pretty big challenge to make it work at all so so i think you know the quality of the reviews is sort of very linked to the process we have so we have to be able to judge of the outcome of the process as a function of the quality of the reviews, as a function of how we run this peer review process. But eventually, I, I think you're right, there will be all kinds of, you know, uh, integration possibilities across different platforms, uh, how, they, how they, they do. I think on the side of the journals, there will be probably a lot of interest in pulling information from different sources. Um, how this is going to be realized in concrete terms, I think it's a bit early to do to to say. Uh, we are going to participate already to workshops to see what could be technical standards to make you know posting these these reviews as an overlay on on preprint uh, interoperable, integratable, and and so on. I think the more possibilities there are for people to aggregate in a, in a meaningful way uh, content, the better it is. Now, I think. In case of review comments and, and the other projects, it is important to have some kind of provenance information, you know, who, ran, who did the peer review. When, when these reviews are ultimately published next to the published paper in a journal, uh, we are going to arrange with the, the affiliates that there, is, there will be a little logo, or a, little, a little mark on the reviews to identify them as coming from review comments, because this is also providing some accountability and credit to the platform that runs the peer review. And I think it would be the same same for you, uh, that there is a, a, a kind of a provenance and, and trustability that comes with, uh, with uh, the reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria, are you ready to ask your question? Yes, I am. Uh, hi. So uh, my question is more about the public and community perception of this new uh, entity, which is the peer review preprint. So, will journals view um, peer review or review comments, peer review preprints as publication? And also, how do you think 
if this um, peer-reviewed preprint exits this um, workflow and goes into traditional peer review, how will it be treated? Will it be treated negatively or positively? And also, um, more generally, which is um, how uh, who in the community or who, who will consider a peer review preprint as valid as journal publication? This is for both. Well, parties. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if well, you can this... do that in two minutes, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, yes, very easily, because I think these are really beautiful questions and a source of inspiration for us. Uh, I have answers to none. Um, this is really going to be maybe a major outcome of the project if this sticks on and the community is likes that we will see how the journals are going to react uh, we don't know um, peer, so review comments is not going to make a decision so the, this is the, the beauty i think of review comments the referee preprint has no decision it's not accepted re rejected and so we we get out of this yes or no all or none decision and I, I think this is something that has been highlighted by Mike Eisen as well um, it is very powerful so where whether something with no black and white decision can be considered as a publication for a CV or for an application or as a competing publication by a journal this is entirely open but this, these are great questions and um, let's watch that space you, you, you will do a study on that <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, we're out of time. There are more questions in the document. Um, and Thomas, if you have time, it would be great to get you on there. Catherine Brown had a question specifically for you. Um, thank you, Catherine, for uh, saying you're willing to let him answer on the doc. Um, we, thank you, everyone, for. Go ahead. No, we will. We will. We will handle ethical problems and make them visible to other affiliates if they are serious. Yes. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and actually, I guess we've got three minutes. If there's a quick question, Daniela, you had a lot, but I wonder if there's a quick question that Thomas might have a no to, and then it's a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free if you'd like to. Yeah, you're trying to unmute. I can see. Yeah, sorry, I was like, I was reading the notes, so I'm like running up. Um, I guess like quick question is like why why. Well, that's actually I know the answer to that because why only by archive? <laughs> but yeah, actually, yes, quick. Uh, why why only by archive is just for now, and do you well, plan to uh, purely, purely pragmatic? I mean, yeah, yeah. No, but, it's purely pragmatic and technical. Bioarchive uh, has implemented the trip, and we have made some sort of developments to integrate with trip. There is no no such thing with archive. Uh, which is a huge limitation so i think sooner or later we will have to provide some way to consider archive uh, papers at least submissions maybe we cannot post the reviews there but at least submissions these are very important papers there and med archive uh, certainly as well so it's just yeah. we had to start from somewhere Thank you. That's a good that's a good philosophy to end this call on. We're starting from somewhere. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining for all your questions. Thank you to Jessica and Thomas for presenting and sharing so much information. Um, uh, we look forward to see how Review Commons progresses. It's an experiment. Right. Um, and we encourage you. There is a Twitter account you can follow at Review Commons. There's a lot of frequently asked questions online. Uh, it is now open for submission, uh, so keep talking about it. Uh, that's what we encourage you to do. Um, and Thomas and Jessica are here to help. Sorry, volunteering you guys. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Enjoy the rest of your days, and hopefully we'll have a recording online to share um, if people agree. Hopefully that will emerge. Thank you all.